welcome to John chapter 21 and we come to uh, our section actually of John's gospel and again we're back to Peter and we're back to uh, his threefold command to Peter to feed my sheep and uh, remember that uh, the different words uh, feed my sheep feed my lambs and shepherd my sheep and we're going to look at uh, what this means, what this meant for Peter, and also what it means uh, for believers today. And of course, John started uh, near the start of his gospel. John started with the really the conversion of Peter in John chapter one. I think it's the first uh, occasion uh, when Peter uh, gets in contact with Christ. In fact, it's his own brother Andrew who uh, brings him uh, to the Lord, isn't it? In John chapter. Uh, one, you remember Andrew and uh, John had spent time in with the Master in uh, verse uh, 39 and then verse 41 the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah which is being interpreted to Christ. And of course, that led to Peter. Uh, verse 42 and he brought him to Jesus and uh, that's the best thing uh, if we're going to bring others to Christ that we can do and when Jesus beheld him he said thou art Simon son of Jonah thou shalt be called Cephas which is by interpretation a stone uh, and throughout John's gospel as there is throughout most of the gospels uh, we get glimpses uh, as to the Lord and Peter uh, we could think of uh, John chapter 13, there are other instances, we'll not go through all of them, but John chapter 13, for example, uh, when the Saviour washed the feet of the disciples, uh, it was uh, Simon Peter who protested. In John 6, in common to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, uh, dost thou wash my feet? It was Simon Peter who protested and spoke up uh, on that occasion. Then we go back to John 6. I think on the other occasion when uh, Simon Peter spoke up, uh, remember when the Lord said, Will you also go away? And of course, Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Uh, thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, and there are two good occasions when Peter spoke up. But then in chapter 13, uh, Peter said, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. And Jesus answered, Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? Uh, the ironic thing was that uh, exactly what Peter was to do later on in his life. But then the Lord said, Very, very, I say unto thee, The cock shall not, crow, shall not crow until thou hast denied me thrice. And then John records the uh, denial, Peter's three denials in John chapter 18. Uh, and I don't read of Peter again, I don't think, until uh, John 21. Now we know that uh, from Mark's Gospel that the Lord appeared privately to Peter and uh, restored him. Uh, but now Peter needs uh, that public uh, restoration. And that's the passage we're going to look at uh, here in John chapter 21. Uh, but let's just pray. Uh, Father, give thanks for your word and thank you for... This time together to read the scriptures. We thank you for this time to be together. We just pray as we read your word that you speak through it. Uh, we thank you for all that's recorded in the Gospels about the Saviour and about the Saviour and Peter. And just pray that this passage you speak uh, into our lives. So we give thanks now and just pray for your help in the Saviour's name. Amen. So John chapter 21 verses 15 and we'll read down to 18, John 21, 15 to 18. Uh, when they had dined or breakfasted, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto them, Feed my lambs, literally give food to my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee, said unto him, Feed my sheep. This time the word feed is different. Uh, it's the word shepherd or tent. Shepherd my sheep. 
Verse 17, so unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Tis unto him, feed or give food to my sheep. And we know that God will bless the reading of his word. Here we see the Lord Jesus gave Peter a threefold command to feed and shepherd his sheep or lambs. Each time the Lord Jesus declared, feed or my sheep or lambs, it was a response to Peter's threefold declaration of his love for Christ. The setting was one of the last of Jesus' post-resurrection appearances to his disciples on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Interesting that uh, the other Gospel writers uh, other Gospel writers end their Gospels, Mark ends with the Saviour uh, being received up. Luke tells us he was uh, carried up. Uh, Matthew, I think, ends with the Great Commission. And that last chapter, Matthew chapter 28, yeah, he ends with worship. When they saw him, they worshipped, uh, but some doubted. Uh, Matthew doesn't record the ascension. Uh, now there's John. John uh, focuses on the fellowship and the restoration that Peter needed uh, if he was going to serve uh, the Lord. And so Jesus prepared a breakfast of fish and bread for them. And then commissioned or Peter with the task of feeding his sheep and tending his lambs. These three commands, often translated the same way, are subtly different. I think we really sort of highlighted this as we went along. The first time Jesus says, uh, pasture, tend the lambs. The word for pasture is in the present tense. Uh, that is the word uh, feed. Uh, means passed to the lambs, denoting a continual action of tending, feeding, and caring for animals. Believers are referred to as sheep throughout Scripture, Psalm 95, verse 7. He is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, Psalm 95, 7. John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. John 10, 9, I am the door to sheep. And so by describing his people as lambs, he is emphasizing their nature as immature and vulnerable and in need of tending and care. Then the second time, uh, the Savior responds, it shepherd my sheep. Uh, Jesus was emphasizing tending the sheep in the supervisory, supervisory capacity, not only feeding, but ruling over them. This expresses the full scope of uh, pastoral oversight both in Peter's future and in all those who will follow him into pastoral ministry. Peter follows uh, the example of Christ and repeats this same Greek word in his first uh, letter to the elders of churches of Asia Minor, First Peter uh, chapter 5, <coughs> excuse me, verses 1 and 2. The elders, the elders which are among you, I exhort. I am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that should be revealed. Uh, feed the flock of God which is among you. That word feed, uh, ten, is the same word uh, that's used in John 21, verse 16, that the Saviour used uh, to Simon Peter himself uh, when he was restoring him. So we can see the impact that uh, this uh, period or this uh, conversation rather between the Lord and him had even on his own life and ministry. Then the third time, uh, the expression is feed or give food uh, to my sheep. Pasture again is, would be another translation. Here Jesus combines different Greek words to make clear the job of the shepherd of the flock of God. They are to tend, care for, and provide spiritual food for God's people, from the youngest lambs to the full-grown sheep, in continual action to nourish and care for their souls, bringing them into the fullness of spiritual maturity. The totality of the task set before Peter and all shepherds is made clear by Jesus' threefold command and the words uh, that he chooses. Now, we know that the Lord Jesus has said, shepherd and tend and pasture 
uh, and what is this food which shepherds are to feed the flock of God with? And of course, it can be none other than the uh, word of God. Peter declares that Christians have to desire the pure spiritual meal from the word so that they can uh, mature uh, in their salvation or grow up. Uh, and as early as the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, uh, we see the Lord describing his word as food. Uh, for the people who live not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from uh, his mouth. Jesus reiterates this thought in his temptation in the wilderness. Uh, the importance of the word of God as food for our souls cannot be overemphasized. Uh, remember Acts chapter 20, uh, for example, uh, when Paul met the Ephesian elders and my leaders. Acts chapter 20 and uh, verse 28. Uh, remember, this was a very sorrowful occasion. We read at the end of this passage that they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and uh, kissed him, sorry most of all for the words which he spake that he should not see in his face anymore. But Acts 20 verse 28. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock, or little flock, over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And notice now verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you inheritance among all them that are sanctified. And so Paul uh, commanded uh, the Ephesian believers, kept them to God and to the word of his grace, uh, which was able to build uh, them up. Uh, I remember in the book of Jude, uh, it mentions uh, believers are to uh, building up ourselves, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Uh, that includes the importance of the uh, word of God in the life of the believer. Clearly then, the job of the shepherds of God's people is providing them with the pure milk of the word of God so they can move on to the meat and solid food of the spiritually mature. Pastoral ministry should be primarily one of the pastors, uh, be one of the pastors feeding the people the word of God. Only then uh, can uh, they declare, as Peter did, their love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so uh, it's a very challenging passage. And when we think of Peter and how he went on from this, uh, we know from the book of the Acts uh, how great the when Peter went on for the Lord, he went on to preach Acts chapter 2 and on other occasions, uh, Acts chapter 10, and how he saw uh, people saved and also he saw the believers established. Uh, and of course, it was based primarily on the Word of God. And of course, the book of the Acts uh, is the progress of the Word of God and the Gospel as it spreads across. Uh, but we can thank God that uh, Peter was restored. And then Peter went on to uh, complete the task which God had told him to do, which was to feed my lambs, shepherd my sheep, and feed my sheep. Let's just pray. Father, give thanks for Lord Jesus. We thank you for the perfect example of one who cared uh, for the disciples, had been loved his own, he loved them unto the end. And we just pray that, uh, that we'd help uh, those in. Uh, leadership to uh, follow the example of Christ and pray with in our own souls there will be a love for the word of God uh, and a love for you and a love for uh, every other Christian so thank you for this time together help us to grow help us to mature help us to be more like the Lord Jesus Christ help us to have that shepherd heart and so we give thanks now and just pray for your help in the Savior's name amen